Hi everybody, how are you doing? I guess we can get started. It is Tuesday, January 18th, 2022, our first meeting of 2022. There is lots and lots going on. So let's start here. Uh, we talked, you know, a bit last month about, um, you know, this is radiating from the seven higher heavens, which the autists are from, which is like the 19th to the 25th dimension. So they're uh, radiating this um, like star geometry uh, and that seems to be the pulse that is coming into uh, this 16th, 17th, and 18th dimensions, uh, which we had not been aware of in the past. You know, we've been aware of, like if, even for the most esoteric people, like if we've been in a 15 dimensional universe. So um, this is, has to do with the changing of the architecture of the cosmos. Um, so, you know, I'll just keep it, keep it at that. So it's, it's changing the architecture so that it can free us from, let's just call negative aliens, the dark shirts, the, the Illuminati followers, the satanics, the Luciferians, I mean, kind of all those things. Um, that have been uh, using reversal codes and inversions to keep us blind, in a sense, mainly the humans, mainly in a 3D um, uh, paradigm based on ego and outer gratification and outside world um, to tell us who we are uh, and what we are when really it should come organically from within. So anyway, so we've talked about that, the 16th, 17th, um, and 18th dimensions. And this green, um, like liquid, uh, sage green energy is, uh, from the seven higher heavens kind of, um, enveloping, um, this, uh, sixth harmonic universe, uh, while these changes are, uh, taking place so that we can come into this, uh, balance with, uh, this sixth harmonic universe. So, um, you know, what happened then, um, since uh, in January, oops, is uh, the there the, were the Earth stargates that connect into these uh, dimensions. So um, you know we've been working on it for a couple of years. Or I've noticed it from Sammy coming in a couple of, you know for the last couple of years. The first one that hit was like in uh, December 2019, and I just remember it. Sammy just completely exploded I mean she completely exploded uh, to the point you know where she's banging her head into the walls and you know my husband's kind of you know holding her and protecting her and um, so I saw this it was like a, a bolt that went through um, uh, Sri Lanka and so I was shown that that was uh, the Stargate the 18th dimensional Stargate where that's where it was going to be I said I thought it would already activate it but it was like kind of beginning to um, uh, form the position, you know, where it was going to come through. So that's basically what it is. So the 18D came in first, and then um, I sort of been seeing the other two, 16 and 17, over the last couple of years, um, particularly last year. So these are like, the stargates would be like the sh a chakra system. So the Earth has um, a chakra system through these stargates uh, that's, you know, each one for each dimension, just like we are, um, have chakras that connect into dimensions as well. So that's why our bodies are multidimensional because we're literally taking these different frequencies um, from each dimension that, and then goes through a spiritual alchemical process based on the soul blueprint that then manifests um, this body. So. Uh, we literally are multidimensional. You can't not be multidimensional. That's what Sammy, it's, you know, has always said. You can't not be multidimensional. Um, so uh, the 16D Stargate is in Kalua Lumpur, and I think I said it backwards in the last video somewhere. Um, the 17D is in Micronesia, and um, the 18D is, uh, you know, Sri Lanka. So. We were driving, I think it was January like 3rd or 4th, um, we were on a drive with Sam and, you know, Chris, and thank goodness we had my, um, I had a, our um, in-home helper with us, um, 
and Sammy just she exploded and she just started banging her head into the, the car window and you know that she was next to and I had to pull over and um, uh, I had to um, so my helper was she was helping keep Sammy safe and I was doing energy work um, and so I was seeing the waves coming in and I was like all right I, I feel like it's time for me to you know direct these uh, waves into their appropriate uh, stargates um, you know, so like Sammy is the one that's kind of out there and I'm the, the physical human grounded one that, you know, I've been sort of the one um, to uh, that to grid uh, what comes in, you know, so this is our sort of partnership. Um, hopefully she won't have to do that anymore once she embodies herself and, you know, uh, but anyway, uh, so I was directing these energies in um, and uh, the flows in and I remember thinking, I wonder if this is going to cause an earthquake because this is this is big stuff you know um to the point where i could literally distinguish now the waves the different waves harmonic waves of each dimension so like 16d was um had kind of this kind of this shape to it like a like a hexagonal kind of shape but it was like a tube and it was you know coming through and there were things coming through but it was kind of blipping in and out um, and then 17D was just felt like these, uh, like you could just barely see it. It would just come into my awareness and then just disappear, come into my awareness and disappear. Um, and uh, I was told that the Micronesia one was, uh, underwater. Um, and you know, lo and behold, right, there's been a, um, there's been a, um, what do you call it? Tsunami in Tonga. So obviously, you know, when you're in that, in the epicenter, it's, it's calmer. And then what the wave that goes out, um, you know, is what went, is what went out through, uh, you know, through Tonga, uh, when it, and it was an, uh, my, my understanding is that it was an underwater, um, volcano that, that erupted, you know, so, and usually these harmonic universes, they go in threes, you know, like one, two, two, two D, three D is in threes, you know, so 18D, uh, 16, 17, 18D are in threes. Um, so, so the one in that center is like a stabilizer, you know. So 2D kind of stabilizes um, that first harmonic universe, one, two, and three. So anyway, so 17D having that, you know, is, is, pretty, um, is pretty powerful. Uh, 18D, what I noticed was it was just this magnificent, this magnificent energy that was, that had such purity to it. I mean, all, that's all I can say. It was just, it just felt so pure and untainted that um, it made me realize that, so, okay, so our bodies are a reflection, reflection of the cosmos. You know, our body is cosmic. Um, and so is the earth. The earth is cosmic. So this is part of the drive now to, um, that permeates our bodies and the, the earth, all matter, to purify, to clean itself out. And um, it's having a push, you know, into all of it. And this has been happening for the past, you know, couple of years and, you know, intensifying. But now, um, and you, meaning the cleansing and the clearings have been going on, you know, organic desire to clear and cleanse. Um, like last year or so, I think, I felt the 15th, 14th and 15th dimension that this energy of coming in uh, of purifying, you know, but now from the 18th dimension, um, because just outside of that is, like I said, the seven higher heavens. And it's not, um, and that that's even a different kind of field. So, um, this is kind of being sent in, you know, from source, the great void, uh, the, um, the, the formlessness of, you know, creation, so to speak. Um, so what else does this, what this does mean? It's a connection into the dark matter realms. Now we've always been connected to the dark matter realms, but we haven't been, let's say, conscious of it or aware of it. Um, and in that sense, then, um, because we've always had to interact with dark matter, and I'll go through a bit of reasons of, of what that means. Um, but uh, so if you have other kinds of multidimensional 
beings, uh, big beings that with low consciousness, let's say, as somebody else that I knew uh, had put it, um, big beings with low consciousness, and they can manipulate the um, uh, the grid and the architecture, uh, the geometries, and how they operate, uh, so that it remains hidden, um, and uh, uh, in a sense, we could say that that's where the subconscious and the unconscious um, has lied, has been. Uh, so, so we even have a dark matter template, um, and Sammy, uh, Samantha, and the autists, they call it the ha ether body um which is uh, interfaces with this 16th 17th and 18th um dimensions so uh what is dark matter um you know we have to kind of talk about it in terms of um a different way of of thinking thinking about it so this is not dark matter as in like good or bad um polarity good or bad this is um a kind of a, a, a substance behind the um, a realm behind uh, what we see it's the is not space as Amy had actually told me many years ago and I did a blog uh, about that that um, we actually uh, um, it we ha have a template in the unseen realms or uh, that tells us that that says what you are not, um, and it's so dark matter. It's the between the spaces that defines the form. Again, you have to kind of um, take try to take your mind out of it and and try to feel what this means. It's it's the closest analogy is like a photo negative. If you you know for those of us who might remember when they used to develop film and you would get this, you know, negative image, you know, it's like that, it's the, it's what you are not, and so what she said to me was that um, you have this uh, template in the, in dark matter um, that your soul kind of emanates, um, and uh, in the defining of what you are not, or what it is not, you actually then create the, the space or the holes for, for the light to go th through. Okay, does that make sense? So then you have this dark matter template that's like a photo negative, and it defines the is not space where the light is going to go through. And so that's our light body. So you create a template with that is your light body, and then um, that's energetically has the information of your DNA that then tells your how the physical body or the white matter body which is what we see to manifest and so um, it even distinguishes right as um, our organs and our body systems are forming it says that you are not a liver you are not a heart you are not a, a blood vessel I mean literally down to that level and as a human template even, right, for the planet, you're not a tree, you're not a fish, you're not a... And so there's a general template of what the human is, and then even more refined, um, you're uh, uh, defined to be what kind of human you are. So there's, there's organs, there's body systems, but then even within that, uh, depending on how the elemental um, spirits and the devas work within your body whether you're going to be more of an air sign more air more water more fire right more earth um and it defines how your physical body manifests the characteristics um the manifested uh light emanation emanation of the blueprint that you are okay i know it's a kind of a you have to start to start, sort of think backwards in a sense but this is what um uh, what is coming um, is our dark matter template defines what it is not so that what is becomes defined it's the light then that you can see it's the white matter that we see in our world 
but it's the dark matter that actually um, defines the space that the, that the light is going to occupy and how it's going to um, manifest or how it's going to look. So it's kind of, you know, it's an interesting way of, uh, of looking at it. Um, and today I was even contemplating or realized that it is dark matter that enables um, even each frequency or vibration to be able to exist or a color to be able to perceive a color, right? Because if we didn't have some type of definition, we would just bleed into everything. There would be no way for source to kind of um, uh, create a structure, create a form, have a, have a blueprint of what, you know, it's going to be, of what red would look like or what um, a certain wavelength or frequency is even going to be. So it's the dark matter that um, plays an important role in, in this process. So think about that for a bit. Um, so it's even been where our unconscious and subconscious mind resides, right? In the, in the realms of the, un, the unseen. Um, and if you even ask yourself, why has it been so difficult to, um, you know, You've been clearing emotional body, clearing mental body. You've been clearing, 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 and then you find that oh, the pattern, the pattern comes back. You know, I, I thought I healed this. Why is it back? You know, um, it seems to be related to this dark matter um, uh, awareness of uh, of dark matter and how again um, these uh, inversions and um, uh, reversals have. Uh, existed to manipulate this is what we would call a false matrix you know we've been in this false matrix where um things aren't moving all the way through the way they're supposed to you know where they when you cl cleanse to really cleanse it and really completely move it out um so uh and while we've been unconscious then we've been humans have been more easily manipulated you know um where uh mind control and thought patterns can be seeded and the human doesn't understand why that that keeps coming up basically so uh that's so what's in it we're all loud sight little we're all sound and light are un, undefined so it's it's these realms before even light and sound are kind of distinguished you know um but it's a way uh so it's a way of uh, being able to have the dark matter realms it's a way of being able to have um, definition a form and uh, a structure so I don't know. that all of it yeah so um, the physical body now that this is opened to us um, and these waves are literally coming in now uh, to the planet to the physical planet um, our, uh, our physical body is undergoing a process and we're going to be trying to, again, trying to purify um, and also then balance the dark matter and white matter that makes up, makes up who, who we are. So this represents an image uh, that I was seeing. Um, so this in here would be the first dimension. So it's red. It's kind of that reddish color. This band is uh, like the second dimension, and this band is like the third dimension, and then uh, this uh, liquid kind of gold fire energy is surrounding this first harmonic universe, which is 1D, 2D, 3D. And um, this coral color seems to be a color that is uh, synthesizing with the dark. So um, 1D, 2D, 3D in our bodies is the root sacral and chakra that's connecting into those dimensions. So um, this is going to cause uh, bigger um, clearings, both for the physical body and also for the mental and emotional bodies that make, a, that make up who we are. So, um, 
there's a good opportunity. I know a lot of a lot of you are you know do cleansing and cleanses and things, um, but it looks like and feels like it's going to get uh, easier now to do that. Where um, so if you've been doing the cleansing uh, using MMS or um, chlorine uh, dioxide or you know other cleansing kinds of herbs and things then um, it seems like it's going to get easier and um, I had a feeling because I haven't done those yet but I had a feeling that there was going to be a time when um, it was going to be easier for me to do it so I'm feeling like I mean I've done some cleansings but uh, not to the degree that I feel like I can do now where it's going to be easier when he has a, a quote or a question um, also Marianne just said so great to hear okay uh, just want to make sure so um, yeah this is this is gonna cause a lot of a lot of changes obviously and like Renee was saying earlier um, cleansing of um, what what I would interpret as a uh, imposter spirit so after this activity that I was witnessing, you know, happening over the last couple of weeks, I started noticing that I could see in the earth even where other types of un imposter spirits, that means they're, they're impersonating as, um, like, let's say the white hats or the good, good spirits. Um, uh, but they're really not. They're part of the uh, dark forces and they, and they really just lead you to another, uh, kind of a reversal that then kind of brings us back down into the same really the same story that we've been uh, operating under so um, it seemed like I could could recognize more of them and see where they are and where they're standing um, in even subtle access points and portals uh, of the earth grid so um, by being able to now identify them and see them where they are I feel like well now you know they're are more uh, we, can, we can direct the stream of energy um, these streams of cleansing and where they need to go so um, then I actually saw um, call this a guardian um, for lack of a better term and uh, she really didn't have eyes uh, but you know I gave her more of a face just to kind of make it more relatable um, I'm allowed some of that uh, discretion when I when I do drawings that um, makes it relatable for people so I do add things to um, things that I that I draw so she's um, uh, f felt feminine and um, she has this um, it's like a turquoise aquamarine kind of diamond which um, is healed represents healed thought healing our thought forms basically so um, she you know where the imposter spirits were she took up you know some of the spaces because um, it's less disruptive if you leave a void space then it, you know people will unconsciously feel um, like there's something missing or a, a, a void a dark void that um, uh, that feels empty and that can be that can be kind of scary so she she's one of them that filled that space and then there was this other one um, another guardian he's uh, like a gold and a silver color he took up um, some of the other other uh, spaces and um, he has a diamond uh, a gold diamond in his forehead uh, that represents um, uh, what do you call it a balance of di um, divine masculine and divine feminine uh, and uh, the divine mind connecting to the divine mind of, of source so as we heal our thoughts what replaces it? We replace it with um, the thoughts of God, what God, thoughts that God has. So that's um, basically what he's doing in there. Um, let's talk for a minute about archetypes. So, because we're going to, you know, the wings of Asclepius is sort of an archetype. Uh, so I think we all have a, kind of an understanding of what an archetype is, but I was like, what does it exactly mean in words, you know, from our perspective? So it's the original pattern or model of which all things of the same um, are representations or, or copies. So, so an archetype um, means 
that um, it's something that's going to be common for um, like there's a human archetype right this is the human template it's it's it looks like this and then within that there's sort of variations you might say there's an archetype of each for each race um, there's archetypes of different types of um, um, I don't know groups even soul groups that have a, a specific kind of mission you know so but the, the archetype of the wings of Asclepius, the ability to heal heal ourselves, was something um, that was supposed to be part of the human template. And uh, you know, if you read the um, the writing with the uh, that the post of the wings of Asclepius, I know I'm losing my words sometimes. Um, that uh, the left wing had been cut, and the, so this. This archetypal kind of wing that's part of our light body exists in the 7th, 8th, ninth dimension, mainly um, the 8th dimension, which is part of uh, the wings, the avatar uh, wings as well. And so if that's part of our light body, then the template for that also exists in the dark matter realms. And so that's why I realized I've been doing that, um, working with off and on the wings of Asclepius and doing a meditation to reattach them and stuff, but um, we also needed this dark matter realm opening in order to really uh, get this uh, get this down, I guess, you know. So so that's what an archetype is. It's supposed to be, and it, it, it uh, there's DNA that, um, you know, what I'm getting right now is that needs to be reassembled in order to really activate the physical aspect of uh, the wings of Asclepius. Um, next, I just want to show this uh, young being that kind of came through, you know, one day when I was, was drawing, and um, uh, this child represents uh, an archetype that I feel like um, the new kids, particularly after the second half of 2020 um, was born into, and they in and the the archetype is a reverence for all life. Uh, and I thought, well, we can have reverence for all life. We can, you know, we we honor all life. We kind of have a spiritual notion of what that means and um, how we should be operating. But this these kids coming in with this actual archetype woven into their physical uh, genetic template um, is it's very it's very physical it's a physical is very physical desire to have reverence for all of life now I'm not I don't know if we can incorporate that I mean I'm guessing you know we can I don't I'm not sure right now but I know that the new kids seem to be being born with that um, and the interesting thing is that um, uh, we don't have to wait for them to grow up to be adults to see what that does. Now, they'll manifest that in their own way as adults, you know, and what they want to create. But just having this energy template here, it will really be a drive and a push for us to move towards um, honoring and and relishing all different types of life forms and life on the planet. It will be a, a drive to um, clean up the planet, clean up the waters, clean up our, um, our, our air, you know, the pollution. It's, it's, it's going to really, it, their presence, just their presence and their light bodies here are going to um, stimulate that and push that. Uh, and interesting that my... Um, my uh, nephew uh, had a baby in late 2020, uh, and he, uh, we just had them over um, a couple of weekends ago, uh, and she's 15 months old, uh, and I was, I was amazed at what, um, how aware she was. Uh, I remember seeing videos of her when she was before you, she was even three months old that she knew exactly what she wanted and what she didn't want or what she liked and didn't like she would 
And um, if you, if any of you remember babies, I mean, years ago, when zero to three months, they were not really smiling or cooing and things. But these new babies are so much more alert. And she would, she was telling her parents what she did not want, <laughs> what she did not like right away, and basically bossing them around, um, even as a baby. And the interesting thing that, that I noticed too, when she was over, is we were um, outside. She loves being outdoors, and. Um, I noticed that she would look up at the sky. So she'd be running around, and then she'd look up at the sky, and she'd point uh, at a bird flying over. And I was like, wow, she didn't even see that bird. She wasn't even looking. And she knew they couldn't, weren't making a sound. And sometimes it was way high up in this tiny little, you know, those little wren kind of looking birds that are flying over. And she knew right away when there was uh, a bird flying over. Uh, and she... Uh, this weekend, she actually popped into my pineal one night, and, um, you know, I just, all of a sudden, she was there, so my pineal was just sparkling, and she showed me this beautiful flower, so uh, I drew it, I didn't, didn't, it's not on this presentation, I might show it in the, in the group, um, but I shared that with my, uh, my nephew and um, his wife, and his, um, her mom, uh, said to me, uh, she loves flowers. She said her first word after um, mom and dad, or mama and papa, was uh, was flower. So I was like, wow. <laughs> uh, so they're much, much more aware. And what they're gonna do in you know 20 years from now, I don't know, but um, they're gonna have a big influence on uh, changing our school system and changing many, many of our systems. Somebody in the chat. Uh, oh, the the um, reverence for all life. Yeah, I hope they're not indoctrinated. Uh, well, you mean my uh, my family? Yeah, they are. They are, but um, they're gonna have to change. They're gonna be forced to forced to change whether they like it or not with these new kids. Um, all the babies. Yeah, the babies are. Uh, the babies are actually. These babies are coming in from a different portal. I'm telling you. Um, what I was shown was that they're coming in through, so when the template that we've been on in this, um, matrix, fallen matrix that we've been on, so when we're born, we're, because there was all this, um, manipulation in the planet and, um, implants that go into the planet, uh, that we adopted them as well, you know, when we're born. So we've had, you know, we've had a lot of implants and we're you know trying to remove them and everything well these kids are coming in through i was shown serious c so i know you know that's not well talked about and i only know one person like maybe 10 years ago um that i followed for a bit and she talked about serious c so it's not one that's visible it's not like on the star maps um but serious c i guess uh, according to what this woman used to say is like an ascended star and it mainly operates in the eighth dimension. And so they're coming through that portal. They're not getting all those implants um, and, and the dead light energy that, that we did. So, you know, can I prove that? I don't know, but that's the information that so, that I got. Um, this is uh, the wings of Asclepius. Um, uh, and, you know, like I was talking about in uh, the post in Patreon, um, since the left wing was cut, that's our feminine side, and we need that feminine side for more than just balance of masculine and feminine. But um, and you know we talk about wholeness, but um, it's about the masculine and feminine is about uh, reflecting to each other. You know, being able to see gives you insight into yourself, um, on a, an awareness of self. So one of the things that the autists had taught me, you know, um, a few years ago was that, um, you know, when the first, let's say feminine, and again, not as in a sex as male or female, but when the first feminine and masculine came to be, it was like source could look in the mirror and see itself for the first time in a whole new, whole new way, you know? Because when you're just in one, when you're just one, in a sense, um, there's nothing outside to, to, to tell you who you are or, or what you are to some degree. 
you know so when that first masculine feminine came to be it was like source looking at itself for the first time and so that's the first two um, and they say that it, that is what we call prime creator so prime creator is um, the first two and it's associated with the number two uh, and so when pro when finally had this masculine feminine and they were able to come together and create the third uh, principle uh, the Christ Sophia then now we have three and we have the first stable geometry which is a triangle and then from that you could you know they were creation was able to build on that stability of that first uh, trinity uh, or Christ consciousness and that's why um, it's considered like the balance of polarity uh, to operate in Christ consciousness and anyway that's the way that's the the way I was you know it was explained to me so by um, reattaching the the um, wings of Asclepius and being able to uh, bring that into our light bodies and then um, transducing that alchemically through our physical bodies then um, we get the ability more of a, a deeper ability to um, heal ourselves and heal ourselves emotionally heal ourselves mentally heal ourselves physically uh, and you know to the point where we evolve to where you don't need to go up for a scan you know from a doctor or um, you don't have to get an x-ray you know you there's an inner knowing being connected to your uh, physical your physicality uh, to know what it is what it is that you need and what kind of healing that you need we can heal ourselves um, and this aspect of the wings of Asclepius is also related to then being able to to be whole you know where all our body parts which are cosmic which have cosmic functions um, can communicate with uh, each other it facilitates that um, organic communication between uh, body parts and body systems so um, this is quite a, um, it's just quite a, an upgrade you know uh, you know I feel and for each of us how we integrate that is uh, gonna vary for each of us and you know I'll just be interested to hear from everyone you know over time here um, how that looks for you and how that feels and you know whatever what else you're supposed to what else you're able to um, reflect on what kinds of awarenesses inner awarenesses come you know from within so that should be interesting to see what happens this ends the presentation portion of our January 18 2022 patreon hangout meeting we lead into a meditation to reattach the wings of Asclepius. If you would like to do that meditation, join us on Patreon, become a Tier 3 member, and you'll gain, gain immediate access to this full video and all the other posts that we've uploaded since November 2021 when we launched our Patreon page. So hope to see you there and hang in there. It's intense times, but many incredible things are happening and we are well on our way to manifesting the new...